We're about to lose one. Get the intruder. Copy. We're almost there. Security breach. Attacking the area. Security breach. Shit, I've got movement. Where? Everywhere. Contact! Hey, what's happening, fellas? Hertz here, back with a little more uh, Spies vs. Mercs, this time playing some classic game style, rather than the Spies vs. Mercs blacklist, which I posted in my very first Spies vs. Mercs video here on the channel. Uh, you will notice the differences. I'm going to run them down here for the first little bit of this match. Looking at, if you're unfamiliar with the game, looking at the map already, you can see there's a lot of darkness out there in the blacklist uh, maps uh, when you're playing SVM blacklist style. Uh, the, all the maps are washed out in light you know there's not there there are shadows it is there are there is darkness out there but not like there is here i mean it's the the, the light and shadow play uh really or the light and shadows really do come into play and uh, the flashlight the merc has a flashlight with him here that is i can turn it on and off if i want to try and play uh, you know a little bit stealthy at times when i'm entering a room so i don't give my position away with that with that big bright flashlight flashing everywhere the other thing you'll notice that as i'm sprinting here my merc is automatically covering the flashlight uh which you know that's kind of a double-edged sword i don't know if that's the right saying but uh it, it it has its benefit and it has its weakness the benefit of covering up that flashlight when i go into a sprint is if i'm trying to trying to sprint to a new area that's being hacked um it gives me an element of stealth of surprise the uh, the spies may not realize that i'm entering the area simply because my flashlight isn't shining everywhere you know it's really noticeable especially with the night vision on um <clears throat> when uh, however when when i am covering that flashlight if i'm wandering into a pitch black area i'm really exposing myself to pos to the to spies that may just be sitting lurking in those shadows waiting for waiting to go in for the kill waiting for that merc to make a mistake you know uh, so so it has its its pros and its cons um and it's it's a nicely little balanced game element you know in the in this classic style um now the other the other differences while well, we're four on four in blacklist uh, in the blacklist style we're two on two in the in the classic and you would think that it's not as intense but it, it it's almost more intense you know because of the darkness because of the shadows um, whereas uh, whereas the the four on four is much more fast paced. This here is a little bit more thoughtful, you know. It's a little bit more, like I said, intense. Um, you, you never know. You really got to be on your toes as the merc. And the great thing about it is that with the two-on-two -two and with all the shadows, the spies are really given the opportunity to put some great stealth work into effect you know you have the time you have the the area you have the shadows uh you have the room to maneuver and, and really play as a spy quietly thoughtfully methodically i don't know how you want to put it exactly but uh, you'll see that come into play when i get onto the spy side of things you will see a little bit of a pretty solid you know, pretty solid stealth attack uh when we when we jump into those spy suits and we've, we were doing a pretty good job locking things down. They're being shut out at this point. I'm running a pretty solid patrol between A and B. My teammate, I believe, is over there in the, one of the hallways between B and C. So we're split up nicely here. And that's the thing about the two-on-two. -two. Um, with the blacklist, with the SVM blacklist, when there is uh, when there's four-on-four four there... There is a lot of... Like I said, it's fast-paced action. It's, it's real intense... Uh, but uh, there are enough mercs to cover all of the terminals, you know, and then some. With the two-on-two, -two, you know, you're really forced to run patrols. You, there's always one terminal that's going to be exposed. And that's where the spies, you know, great spies will will, will, uh, will know which terminal to strike. Will get in there when the mercs are kind of out of position. And when they can do that, when they catch the mercs out of, out of position. And, and if they can initiate a hack and have the time to set up... Um, in, a, in a good area within that to that hack that hack area you know that hack room um, then then they, they can really run that that hack all the way to 100% relatively easily you know just simply because once they're in once they have the hack going and once they get into position it can be tough to break that down if it's a smart spy with a, a relatively decent strategy going into that room you know because of the shadows, because of the shadows, I guess that's what I'm trying to say there. 
Anyway, we're still continuing to lock things down. I did get put down once there, and I'm looking for a little revenge. I get the uh, <laughs> I get the, the VX gas out. I pull it out. Now, did I mention that uh, that the uh, the uh, the loadouts are locked down for the? I don't think I have yet. Uh, for classic, the the loadouts are completely locked down. They're they're all the same. They're ge simply generic loadouts. Whereas with uh, with the, the blacklist, the SVM blacklist playstyle, we're looking at customizable loadouts, as you saw previously in that. Pro if you didn't, you know, if you watched the, the the very first episode, the very first gameplay, I put up here on the channel. Um, and I'm gonna run down the Merc loadout right now. <clears throat> We have a lot more gear at our disposal in this two versus two classic style than we do on the blacklist mode, uh, but but there's no customization. So we have only the flashlight, and we're locked down to this uh, motion tracking vision mode, which you can see that little semicircle radar at the bottom of my screen. That is my motion tracker, and you see them popping up on radar when they're making too much noise running on by. If the spy is crouched while he's moving, he won't pop up on radar. However, his footsteps, depending on how fast he's moving when he's crouched, will still make noise. Um, different areas produce greater noise or more distinct noises, like if he's wandering through a vent at, uh, at a high rate of speed, then you will hear uh, a lot more clanking than you'll hear if he's down here at moving at the same speed on these concrete or carpeted floors or wherever the hell he is, you know, which is a nice, which is nice to see in this game. I can't remember. I think it was probably part of the old Chaos Theory game. There were similar, uh, similar differences in 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 sound depending on what you were walking on. You know, I think the spies probably made a little bit more noise, you know, clamoring through a vent somewhere than they did just out on an open room on an open hardwood floor or something, right? So they've really, uh, you know what, they've really, after all that rambling on, you can see they've finally gotten a terminal. Their, their grips, their tendrils into a terminal here, and it looks like they're going to they're gonna be able to hold this one off. Uh, a great defensive play by, I'm not sure who it was on the other team, but uh, he put up a great defense there on those main doors, not only taking out me uh, with a great aerial assault, but my teammate as well, and it really did give the, the, the spies, the enemies here, uh, the window that they needed to, to complete this hack, you know. Because once we wait, we, we were put down, we have to wait for that spawn timer to click down. By the time we get here, you know, they've only got 25% left. And then it's a really a mad rush, a mad dash to try and find the hacker. And, uh, and it can be tough in these shadows, you know. That's what makes the classic style great. The shadow play that comes, you know, that, that, that's, uh, that's at work here. So now with only two terminals left, I, I really wish that G G -Z -X here, G -X G X X. I'm not really sure what the name is supposed to be. I really wish he would hightail it out of the area, head over to A. So you know what? I figure if he's just going to hang out here, then that's where I'm heading. And I drop a couple mines just to back him up and start making my way across the lower level to A. But uh, I'm stopped short here as I hear the kind of the distinctive a slice and dice and a thud of my my dead teammate hitting the floor above me. And I'm moving up here. I'm getting ready to climb this ladder and head over there to deal with the threat. You can see the silhouette uh, <laughs> crossing that little pocket of light over there. However, you know, his teammate is hitting A at the same time. So I really got to make a judgment call. What am I going to do? Well, I decide I'm going to avenge my teammate. However, the thing's not really working out as planned as I come around the corner there and get zapped. Now, with that mine I had placed, he really didn't stand a chance of coming in for the kill on me. So that mine, that little buffer, it was a little buffer there that, uh, that really kept me alive. Uh, well, I was being electrified, right, by his his great spy play, and eventually, did I put him down? God damn, I wasn't even looking at the screen. I think I did. Uh, I can only guess that I did. Either either that, or I just let him get away and was uh, was making my run for A here to try and cut this cut this hack short because my teammate over here is having no luck finding this hacker. So uh, you know, Merc Hertz has to come into the area and put this sucker down. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to find him here shortly. I promise you that. I throw a grenade in there just to kind of get a good sense if anybody's hiding around the corner there. You did hear the hit marker. He gave his position away. And uh, he, it was easy just to go around the corner at that point and, and put him down for the kill. You can see his teammate coming in here trying to carry on this hack. Trying to keep it going before the firewall's reestablished. But uh, he, he's not going to have any luck breaking in here as uh, my teammate making pretty quick work of him once we had him on that motion tracker. You know, we, we knew where to look. Anyway, I'm dropping the ammo resupply. Uh, did I actually do the rundown for the full rundown for the for the Mercs loadout? No, I haven't. So the Mercs are carrying... Um, 
gr grenades, frag grenades, well, you've seen it all, really. Gr frag grenades, a VX poison gas, and, uh, and proximity mines, as well as one ammo resupply that can be dropped and uh, can be can be used, I think, twice, you know. You get a couple of supplies out of it, as so long as it, it doesn't get destroyed by the spies or overused by your teammate as well. However, you know, those proximity mines, despite being able to restock them when you have two down already, I'm pretty sure that if you place a third one down, the very first one you dropped will will just vanish. So I'm pretty sure, I mean, don't quote me on it, but I'm pretty sure you can only have two mines down at once, okay? So anyway, with only, you know, 20 seconds left, they managed to initiate this hack on A one more time. It seems to be where they've had a little bit of success, so it looks like they're, they're trying to make one final run at this terminal. And, uh, you know, the defender in here putting up a pretty solid defense uh, a wide perimeter on this room putting up an early defense on it and uh, you know what it really was a rookie mistake he got a great zap on me there a great shot and he should have come around the corner and, and gone in for the kill even if it cost him his life because my teammate was coming in behind me uh, it was it still would have been worth it because it would have been one less merc coming in here to, to hunt down this hacker you know who was in desperate need of he really needs this terminal you know he really needs it uh, as, uh, as time, we're now in overtime here. Now, if that little click, if you heard it, that is the sound of the spies, the sticky camera decoy noise. So he's trying to lure us in here. He's saying, listen, sucker, I know you're in the room. Get over here. And I'm, I'm approaching here cautiously. You know, I toss that VX gas in there to try and flush him out, try and get a bead on him. And, uh, because there was no coffin or anything, I thought, well, maybe he dropped the sticky cam and was over here on this side trying to lure me away from him. I mean, it's a great strategy if you can uh, put it into effect. But, uh, you know what? Finally, I just decided is he back in the exact same location? Yes, he is. And uh, I just go in there, shoot this cam, and and put him down. And follow it up with a nice little VX gas on the terminal, just to keep anybody, at, you know, his just to keep his teammate from coming in there and picking up that hack where it left off. And, and now it's just a matter of waiting for those one final wait for those firewalls to reestablish. And there it is, halftime. So they managed to pull in one terminal, managed to pull in 73% on the second, which is uh, which is good because we're gonna have our work cut out for us here. Um, um, and uh, some pretty good numbers there for me. Uh, five defense, or five defense kills, eleven kills total, two deaths, and my teammate, considering his rank, a pretty solid round with a with a respectable three and three. So now coming in here on the spy side. Now if we hack two terminals, the round automatically ends. We will be victorious. Okay, that's how it works. You know. So we need to grab two for victory here. You can see the night vision is cracked on with the spies. The standard loadout for the spies in the classic play style or the classic game style. Um, are, uh, we have uh, the night vision that you can see right now. We have a non-lethal weapon. It is the uh, that little zapper bow. It's completely non-lethal. It, it's slow to reload. It's single shot. But if used properly, and you, it can be really effective for setting up pretty easy takedowns. You know, if you fire it at just the right time, if you can line the shot up well enough and, and fire it at the right time, at the right range, it all, will always expose the Merc to a really simple takedown after that uh, that shock is uh, finds its mark, you know. Uh, as far as gadgets go, we have EMPs, we have smokes, we have flashbangs, and we have those sticky cameras at our disposal. And right here you can see I was just, <laughs> you know, caught dangling there, caught with my pants down and I'm forced to reposition oh, a little mad dash here and uh, it really worked out well, you know. And here I am in the shadows. I mean, you can't really see it with the night vision here, but uh, this is a pitch black area and the thing is, is that if Merc's round the corner or come in the doorway that we can't see that's off camera right now, if they're not looking up, they're not going to see the spy there you know, eight times out of ten. We'll put it that way. So this is a nice little area. I like hanging out here when I can. There are plenty of good little areas, but I do like this one in particular. And I played it really w pretty well once I disappeared down here. I got the smoke up just for a little added cover. And now following that up with a sticky cam, just in case anybody comes to, comes rushing down those stairs or, or cutting across the room and, and is looking to check this little area behind those servers that are in front of me, uh, I have the sticky cam down as a little bit of a buffer, you know, as, uh, as, as something to put them down because this sucker is explosive. And you can hear me decoying it up. Uh, cracking my knuckles, you know, that's what it sounds like, like somebody cracking their knuckles. Anyway, it's pretty good range on the explosives there. I got a few hit markers on it, not enough to take the Merc down, but I followed up quickly with a smoke grenade and then get a death from above from that hanging pipe, which was just beautiful, just as I hack it and everything. 
and uh, out the area, out of the area we go, and I'm being tracked by his teammate, and foolishly, I turned around, because I heard the footsteps coming in, I wanted to see if he was going to go running on by, but because I was in such a hustle, such a rush to get out of there, you know, I was obviously on the motion, motion tracking, his motion tracking vision, uh, I was coming up as a blip on radar, so he knew that I was in the area, that I had probably cut down that vent, and uh, managed to get the kill on me, so despite having a successful hack, I couldn't exit the area clean, but that's fine, that's fine. Back to life, and I'm heading for C here. And you can see right here, I mean, this is what I'm talking about. Stealth coming into effect. I have the time, and uh, it, it's of benefit here because of the motion tracking, because that uh, I don't want the, the two mercs that are out there to know that I'm heading for this area. If they both are hanging out at B, I want them to stay at B, thinking that I'm going to be, be at, or thinking that the spies, myself and my teammate, are going to be attacking that terminal. Uh, so it allows me, it gives me the time to come in here and try and get into a decent position position you know now I did see the flashlight coming in I didn't want to expose myself I didn't want to give my position away so I go ducking straight into some cover with all the darkness in this room I'm in a great position you know I probably could have gone in for the takedown there I really wasn't sure what to do I just thought it's safer just to run around the corner the other way and try and stay in some cover I'm trying to get to the room that you can't see right now that's directly at my six you know uh, there's a doorway there's a side room attached to this room it's a it's a small narrow corridor but uh, I'm trying to get over there I'm just waiting for the right opportunity to make my move and there it is I saw my teammate dropping in from that window and and there we go I come sliding in here now I'm in some good shadows now I can kind of I'll, I'll be able to see when they're coming down this uh, coming into this hallway because of their flashlights and I can set up a sticky camera here just to get an even better sense of, of if somebody's coming into this room and I'll be able to react accordingly and, and hopefully get the jump on them uh, if worse comes to worse somebody's or if you know it the best case scenario not the worst case the best case scenario is that happens right there somebody moves right in on my sticky cam and I put them down and there we go a nice little defense kill for myself uh, since I am the hacker and I just zap out the light and move into this little vent which I love to use you know um, because it gives you good crossover and uh, but that was beautiful right there and unfortunately I wander into this minefield amazingly though I survive and I decide I'm gonna reposition and just put up a nice perimeter on the main door try and ride this hack out and I will and there we go it is it will be successful here there's our two stations hacked or two terminals hacked and there it is but going back to that little vent I mean it's a great little crossover point when you know somebody's gonna wander around into that side corridor that side room that's when I make my move up into that vent and hopefully stay concealed uh, it just worked out nicely that the guy walked right past it right past my uh, right past the open vent and I was able to go in there for the kill and just tossing the smoke on his noodle when I did so uh, <laughs> just added to the the whole effect of it all you know luckily I survived that little minefield I, I just barely skirted it you know just barely got out of there in time but uh, victory is ours two terminals to uh, one and 73 percent so they put up a good fight you know uh, we probably could have pulled in the third terminal when it was all said and done, but uh, two will do. There's no uh, no need to, uh, to, to, to well, what is the saying, kick a dead horse when it's down, right? So uh, let's take a look at the numbers there. Two hacks for me, five defends, uh, 14 kills, and three deaths when it was all said and done. Good score there with a 4,500. My teammate, you know... Probably a rookie player, but a five and seven certainly helped out the cause. Um, down on the other side, eight and nine for Dima there, and he's got some experience. He knows what's up. You know, you you can't really go by the rankings here. I mean, I don't know if they've patched it yet, but when you restart the single player game, your ranking in the uh, in the multi on the multiplayer side of things would reset from from whatever it was back down to one again. You know. But I'm pretty sure Isma there was uh, was certainly a rookie with his 2-11 and 11 and just a couple of boneheaded plays by him. Just a rookie mistakes, not really boneheaded plays. But uh, he did get a couple of good zaps on me. Uh, on that second one, he certainly should have been able to go in for the kill, and he didn't. Uh, but anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. I hope you liked the Blacklist style. I'm going to get a good mix of, uh, of Blacklist and, and the, uh, or I guess that was Classic style, not Blacklist. I hope you liked it. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to get a good mix of the Blacklist 
playlist and the classic styles up here. There are a few more game modes. If I can find a game that's good at some point, I may try capturing it up in one of those other game modes as well, including Team Deathmatch. Team Deathmatch is in there. Uh, so I'll try and uh, get a good mix of it all up here with various loadouts and uh, across all the maps. And like I said previous episode, I'll try and get to the, uh, the SVM you know, the SVM multiplayer gameplay videos up here on the channel, up into the, about the dozens somewhere. Um, so anyway, again, thanks for watching. Please do leave a like or comment. Sub the channel if you're new around here and you haven't already. Please do come back for some more, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Later, all.